Yo guys, Big Dog B back down at the bench and I bet you're wondering why I titled this video uh, What Reloading Shortage? Well, the reason I titled that is uh, I don't know if it's because everything's coming back I don't know if uh, I'm just lucky or I know where to look but I think I'm doing okay uh, I finally loaded up all my 200 grain bullets. For some of you that may know, I'm switching over to 230 grain. So, these here and one other box are the last of my 200 grain uh, plated round nose from Extreme Bullets. Okay, um, I'll finish those up. But, in the meantime, I was getting a little bit worried that I was going to run, be running low, so I started placing some orders. Now, yes, a lot of places are back ordered and you just have to kind of be patient. But what I have waiting for me right now is I have these 500 uh, molly coated bullets from Black Bullets International. I have another 500 uh, lead truncated cones from Rogers Better Bullets in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Uh, those are 225 grain. I have 500 230 grain, <coughs> excuse me. Mm. 230 grain round nose plated from extreme bullets. Okay, let's go see those. That's 500 right there. And in case you didn't know, the reason this box is sitting here is, oh, come on, really? And so much for doing an awesome reveal. Call me silly for not cutting the box open. Here's another 500. Oh, wait. And what is that behind the camera that you can't see? <gasps> That's two more boxes of 500. I have, uh, what, so what I ended, 2,000. 2,000, 230 grain round nose plated bullets from Extreme Bullets. In here, I have a whole bunch of once fired brass, and I have another box. If you guys know, uh, the size of the box, it's a medium flat rate box, it's just using it for storage, of 45 ACP brass. <coughs> Excuse me, I have another box exactly like this one. This one is actually cleaned and polished. The other box is just cleaned. Um, I'm actually toying with the idea of not polishing anymore because honestly I don't see that big of a difference and they're only going to get fired and most of the time, you know, they're lost brass matches so why waste the time polishing? Okay, now let's get to some more of our consumables. Uh, pist large pistol primers, I have... Wow, uh, I'm actually running really low on those. Those, there is a shortage of. Uh, the good news is that large pistol, you can usually find a little bit better than you can small pistol. Um, the large pistol, I have these two boxes here, so there's 200 right here. I have about another 100 sitting in my press over here, and I got another 1,000 on my other workbench behind the camera. So I still have uh, a, a number that I can reload. However, for small pistol, this is all I got left. I only got 500 left. So right now, I've been doing a, a major, major shift of making sure that I... Um, separate out my large and small pistol primers, which I do anyway, and just kind of put all the smalls off to the side so that I don't use those up uh, in case I need the small pistol later on. Now let's talk about powder. As you guys know, I was using bullseye. I have been able to un unable to find bullseye powder anywhere, and I've got maybe half a pound of this left. Okay, I had the Winchester 231 that I originally started using. I use this for my 38 special loads. If I have to, I can always load up 45 with this. I still got about a pound in there. I haven't really used a whole lot. I was very fortunate at my local gun shop. Not only am I switching over to 230 grain uh, bullets, round nose, I'm also switching over to clays. For those that are in the competition world, they know, know that clays is one of the number one powders that is used in competition. Um, meters well, shoots uh, soft, fast burning powder. Uh, my local gun shop actually had three canisters, three pounds in stock. I said, I'll take all three of them. And they said, nope, uh, I can only buy one at a time. So I had to buy one 
I was like, okay, I gotta take out to my car and come back. And the guy's like, nope, you have to come back another day. So I ended up going back the next day just because I was right there and I bought a second one. So I believe there's still one on the shelf. Um, but the good news is they actually had clays in stock, which I was actually really, really surprised to see. So at this point, when it comes down to it, I've got plenty of brass. As you can see, I've got plenty of bullets. I've got powder. Right now, the only thing I'm short on is primers, and I just got to go out and do some shopping and see if I can find them. I don't order primers or powder online because the cost of the hazmat fee is damn near or if not more than what the actual cost of the primers or the powder are. Uh, let me give you a, a little insight about how some of these things came around. Most of this brass is stuff, uh, most of this brass um, I ordered, with the exception of the nickel one here, uh, I ordered from BrassExchange.com, or is it .net? Um, they uh, specialize in once fired brass. Uh, they're on a back weight like everybody else, but I think I ordered uh, a thousand or two thousand uh, empty cases here. And uh, I think within three weeks I had them. So uh, that was great. The molly coated bullets you guys have seen before, uh, I got lucky on those before uh, the company Black Bullets International shut down ordering. The big question came with extreme bullets and the uh, plated round nose that I have here um, because these guys were no longer taking orders online and they didn't really list how long it, their back order time was. So I made a phone call. I just simply called them up and said, hey, I'm looking to find out how long your back order time is. What is you know, uh, you know, just to get a general idea of when I can order again, the woman on the phone said, well, if you'd like, place an order over the phone with me. And I thought, okay, so we don't normally do this, uh, you know, we're trying to limit how much we do. And she said, well, how much would you like to order? I said, well, I'll take a thousand. I said, you know what, let's make it two thousand. I'm not wasting, I'm not taking any chances. So I put in an order for two thousand, 230 grain round nose plated bullets, and I, they told me it was going to be four to five weeks, four to six weeks, something in that area. So I wasn't expecting it. Next thing I know, I get an email saying they've shipped and my mailman's dropping them off at the door. I felt really bad for him because that was about 65 pounds worth of bullets. Um, and the good news was I had it in two weeks. So maybe it depends on caliber type. Uh, maybe it's the nine millimeters that are taking forever. Maybe the 45s are less in demand. I don't know. Here's my tip to everyone who reloads and is finding themselves short on components. A lot of these websites are not taking orders. It doesn't hurt to make a phone call. Find out how long the back order time is. See if you can get on the back order list. I mean, if they tell you it's going to be two months or three months before you get it, before they can get around to your order, at least you have the order in. Okay. I, mean, I know in the digital age that we work in now, hardly anybody ever makes phone calls anymore. But you know what? It cannot hurt to make a quick phone call, just to double check to find out. Can you get on some sort of list? Can you place an order and then just be part of the back order or whatever the case may be? Look what it did for me. I made a phone call. Two weeks later, I had 2,000 rounds sitting here on my bench. So, and the same with uh, the brass. Um, I actually got lucky with the brass. I was able to place that order online, but I could have easily have called them and said, hey, how long until you guys get some 45 brass? So that's my tip to you guys. If you're looking for reloading components, make some phone calls. You can have a well-stocked bench like I do. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.